Hello friends, Bobby Spellman and Ralph the Cat here for BOW! Spellman Music Studios. Quick announcement, if you or someone you know is interested in lessons in trumpet, trombone, French horn, baritone horn, slide trumpet for some reason, any of the saxophones, flutes, clarinets, or improvisation theory or composition, we're still, we've got some openings still for the fall, so send us an email or find us through the website and we'll be in touch. All right, today I'd like to take a little time to talk some more about slides. Now, as you can see, the trumpet has three movable slides. The tuning slide, discussed in an earlier video, the third valve slide, attached to the third valve, and the first valve slide, controlling the intonation of the first valve. Now, you might notice that I'm using my backup trumpet because my old Martin Committee's from 1945 and does not have a first valve slide. This is a modern invention, but you can find that it will be helpful, and most trumpets nowadays come with both the third and the first valve slide. Now you might ask, why so many slides? Well, the short answer is physics. It's difficult to build a musical instrument that can play in all 12 keys across the register of the instrument in tune. So we have these extra slides in order to account for certain irregularities in the intonation of the trumpet. In order to demonstrate this, let's take out the tuner. That's a tuner, bro. Now you notice that on a C, or a concert B-flat, the trumpet is right in tune. However, if we follow the C-sharp scale down to the low C-sharp, that low C-sharp, or concert B, is super sharp. Now it's the same thing if we go down to that low D. On all trumpets, the tendency is for that low C-sharp and the low D to be out of tune. Once again, because of physics. In order to stay in tune with yourself and with an ensemble, you're going to want to kick that third valve slide out anytime you go down to the low C-sharp or the low D. Now, it tends to be that your C-sharp is going to be pretty far out and the D is only going to be a little farther out. But it really depends not only on the trumpet, but the combination of the trumpet and the mouthpiece that you're playing. So you may want to sit down with a tuner and experiment with how far out those slides need to be in order to get the intonation just right on the low C-sharp and the low D. Let me demonstrate. That's D and C sharp. D, C sharp. One way I like to practice using the third valve slide is to run through some of the scales and modes that incorporate both that low C sharp and the low D. The first one I recommend is often the A major scale starting on low A, but you can also do the B minor scale or any of the other scales that incorporate some of those notes to get a handle on kicking that third valve slide every time you go down to the C sharp or the D. One of the big benefits to using a familiar scale to practice the use of the third valve slide is the scale gives a context to the intonation of those lower notes, the C sharp and the D, so that you can compare your intonation of those notes to the rest of the scale and make sure that you're getting it right in tune. The goal over time is to make all of that second nature. So anytime you're playing the low D or the low C sharp, it's just Second nature to kick that third slide out and get everything right in tune. That way, if you're playing a piece or if you're improvising, you don't have to think about it. It just becomes another mechanism as a part of the trumpet. Though less often used, the first valve slide can also be a useful tool in the righteous battle for intonation. Typically, this is used for high A above the staff, but can also be used in any instance where the first valve causes a note that is a little sharper than you need it to be. To demonstrate, let's return to the tuner. That's a tuner, bro. I'm able to knock that A right back into tune just by pulling out that first valve slide. Ah! 
One other funny trick you can do using the first and third valve slides is if you want to add an extra note to the lower register of the trumpet for some reason, you can play down to the F sharp, kick both of those slides out, and voila, you've got an extra low F. <laughs> Also essential if for some reason you want to do this. And there you have it, the first and third valve slides on the trumpet. Really get used to using them, practice those scales, get it so that it's automatic, so that all of your friends in the ensemble will rejoice at the perfect intonation that you have on your low Ds and C sharps and up to your high A's and with any other note that may be sharp on the instrument. One thing that you want to keep in mind is that how far out you pull those slides is personal to each trumpet and sometimes to the trumpet mouthpiece combination. So one thing that you can do is sit down with a tuning note or with a tuning and really practice figuring out how far out those slides want to be to make sure that you've achieved perfect intonation. All right, thanks again for watching. My name is Bobby Spellman for Spellman Music Studios, and we'll see you next time.